Greetings everyone, and welcome back to a cheapo laptop review. Well, it's not a cheapo laptop if you bought it brand new, but for what I got it for, it's kind of cheapo. I rarely do laptop reviews, but this certain laptop that I've picked up, I wanted to show to you all, and you've probably already seen this before, you already know that exists, and you probably know the details of it and stuff, but me personally, I'm quite intrigued to see just how good this thing is. And what I'm going to be taking a look at is not just any old laptop. No, 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 that'd be too easy. This is the laptop made to play Minecraft. It is a Minecraft edition laptop. It's a cheapo laptop. They've painted green, put some paint on the keys, chucked Minecraft on there and said, Minecraft. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. Obviously, we're going to be trying Minecraft to see how well it actually runs. And I'm also going to be trying other things to see if it's good for just general purpose use. But considering the specifications of this thing, I'm not expecting too much. So buckle up, folks, because we're going to be taking a look at this really amazing piece of machinery. But if you feel that the video is going to go for too long, which it likely will, feel free to use the timestamps in the description as well as the pinned comments so you can skip to wherever you need to be in the video because I will be doing a teardown, browser test, speaker test, all the usual stuff that I do. Here it is at JB Hi-Fi for $429 Australian. This is actually the upgraded model. This is the SC403. I have the SC402, which was released about a year and a half ago, I believe. This one for 429 Australian dollars, which I'll display a quick currency conversion chart to tell you how much a cheapo laptop that comes with Minecraft is worth in certain places around the world. If you are savvy enough, you could pick up a secondhand laptop off marketplace or, you know, go into a cashies or something like that. And that would be more than enough to play Minecraft. But they've marketed this out there to say, hey, your kids want to play Minecraft? Well, this is the right thing to go with. Honestly, about this laptop, it's really just a gimmick for kids, I guess, with the whole Minecraft thing. If you strip away the Minecraft, it's just a generic laptop at the end of the day. It's just this one happens to be decorated and all that sort of stuff because it's made to play Minecraft. But this one has an Intel Core Celeron N4020 with 4 meg cache up to 2.8 gigahertz with 4 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gig of eMMC. So not an SSD, eMMC. This is just as a reference for what the new version is going for because my one I found on a random website going for $475 Australian and this is in stock and it's the Leader Companion 402 Minecraft Edition 14 inch HD Intel J4105 which is a Celeron 4 gigabytes of RAM 64 gig eMMC and Windows 10 S I don't have Windows 10 S on this it originally came with Windows 11 and I've put Windows 10 Home on it that's it right there for $475 and in the world of new laptops this is on the very budget pricing of laptops, I'm pretty sure you can get something a bit more powerful for the same price. Just before I tell you the full specifications of this, I'll just quickly go through some of the advertising for the Minecraft laptop to show you what they're saying about this. 14.1 inch HD screen, four gigs of memory, 64 gig storage with Windows 10 S and a Celeron inside. It's definitely seeming like a powerhouse there. Explore your own unique world and create anything you can imagine with a Celeron. Okay, I'll admit really old Celerons were terrible, but the newer ones aren't half bad if you just want to do very minimal stuff it will work for it and as i was just saying that ultimate minecraft experience with intel quad core j4105 processor you won't have long loading times or in-game lag get the best minecraft experience with leader companion laptop minecraft edition minecraft game included simply following the instructions in the box to download the game for free because mine's second hand i didn't get the minecraft license with it but luckily i do own minecraft customized keyboard play minecraft the ultimate way with highlighted gaming keys to match the green chassis it's green I can say that, and the person who owned this previously put all the stickers that came in the box on this already. But you might be asking yourself where I got this laptop from. Of course I picked it up at Cashies. So some kid got sick of it and the parents won't find them. We'll sell it to Cashies. Complete with Windows 10, SE402 is a versatile laptop, perfectly suited to double as a portable homework machine with its lightweight frame and up to six hours of battery life. It is lightweight, and once again with my unit being secondhand, the battery life isn't really going to be as it was from the factory, but I will be showcasing the battery life later on. So that's all the main advertising for this. Pretty much just hyping it up to be the ultimate solution to playing Minecraft on a laptop. Most people who buy this probably already have a laptop at home that plays Minecraft anyways, just agree with everything at this point in time. But the full specifications are as follows. So we've got the Intel Celeron J4105 processor, that's a quad core up to 2.5 gigahertz, 4 meg of L2 cache, 10 watt TDP, and is 
made on a 14 nanometer manufacturing process. The screen is a 14.1 inch 1366 by 768 display with, get ready for it, a 12 millisecond response time. I haven't heard of a 12 millisecond response time for at least 15 years. Memory is four gig DDR3. That is not upgradable. That is correct. You cannot upgrade the RAM in this. Everything is on one motherboard inside of this. That goes the same with the storage, 64 gig eMMC. You cannot upgrade this and you cannot add an SSD into this, even though, as I'll show you on later on during the teardown, there are options that could have been implemented from the factory to have an SSD installed into this. But because this is a reused motherboard and they wanted to have this as cheap as possible, those options have been stripped out. Graphics wise, we just have the integrated Intel Ultra HD 600 graphics. Operating system by default is Windows 10 S with Microsoft 365 on it. Ports and connectivity, we've got a micro SD card slot, two USB 3.0 ports, a mini HDMI port. It also has a headphone jack as well. Bluetooth, and we've got Wi-Fi. That's only just 2.4 gigahertz. The battery is a 5,000 milliamp hour one with up to six hours of battery life, but I'll talk about battery later on. The dimensions and weight of this, are displayed on screen, but the weight only being 1.46 kilograms, it is a very light laptop, but it doesn't need to be a heavy thing for what it offers anyways. We've also got a webcam, which I believe is a VGA one, usual onboard microphone, and two speakers. That's all of the specifications for the laptop. So let's jump to the unboxing, which I can't do here because the box is a bit too big. Let me show you the laptop and we'll start testing this thing out and see what it can do. But here is the Minecraft Companion 402 Minecraft Edition 14.1 inch laptop with Microsoft 365. Minecraft game included, licensed Minecraft stickers made by Lida, which is a cheapo brand here in Australia. Not sure if it's in any other countries or not. As you can see, it's a fairly appealing box. And when I seen the price tag of only $89 at Cashies, I thought this would be really interesting to take a look at. And well, here we are. 100% Australian owned and operated, customized to suit your needs, local support, service, and warranty. So if there's anything wrong with this, just contact these guys. Say, hey, my laptop doesn't do anything. I'll fix it for you. Lida recommends Windows. I mean, you could definitely put a Linux distro on this and it would probably run a lot better, but we're gonna test this as it should be out of the box with Windows 10 on it. Got some Minecraft screenshots on the back and some quick specs that I've already been over. And that's pretty much it around the box. And then as for unboxing it, well, here it is. There's the laptop, some liter packaging, and just a charger inside of there. The charger is a 12 volt at two amps, and I can say this does take a while to charge. It takes about three hours from 0% to 100%. No instructions or anything like that, but we do get the liter care one year on site warranty card. And is it still in warranty? No, it's two years out of warranty. Thank you for purchasing a liter notebook. Liter? Sounds like I'm saying liter, like as in a liter of milk. Also, it says Companion 420 on here. I mean, it's green, so I guess that makes sense. Anywho, that's the unboxing because there's not much here. And since this is secondhand, the previous owner has already went ahead and put all of the stickers in the appropriate places, actually. I won't knock them for putting Steve over there and you over there and the Minecraft logo there. It's a bit crooked and all that sort of stuff. It's looking good, but yeah, it's uh, a very recognizable green color, if you catch my reference there. It is a fairly thin laptop, I'll give it that, and it is fairly lightweight. And build quality is on the pretty cheap side, but for a laptop that's literally meant to be given to a kid, opened up, play Minecraft, and maybe go on the web, watch a couple of YouTube videos, and do some homework, this is gonna be perfectly fine for that. Around the laptop, micro SD card slot, headphone jack, USB 3 port, no lights or anything on the front of the laptop. On the other side, we do have the USB 3.0 port, the DC in with a little power LED just there, and mini HDMI that's upside down. But it works. Well, actually, I haven't tested it, but I assume it would work. And then opening this up, here it is. I can't quite fit the laptop in frame at the moment. So let's just go over sort of the layout of the keyboard and stuff, which is just a very standard keyboard layout there. The keys themselves aren't the best. They do feel a little bit floaty. From my testing, it's been more than enough and playing Minecraft on this as well has been okay. It's cheap, it's plasticky, but it works. The trackpad on this is kind of iffy. When I was trying to just do normal tasks and stuff, if I'd swipe up like that, sometimes the mouse would sort of just jump by itself sort of thing, and it wouldn't just smoothly scroll across. Luckily, just connect the mouse up to it and use that, and you'll be good to go. That's what I'll be doing for the main point of the review. Power button is built onto the keyboard, and we do have the cache sticker, as well as the Intel Solaron inside sticker. The screen on this looks a little something like that. We've got the little VGA camera at the top there, which I've already taken a quick couple of photos and videos with this, and it's about as good as you'd expect for a VGA camera on a cheap laptop. And yeah, the display I'll need to talk about soon once we power it on, because this display has some problems. It's pretty bad. All right, well, that's the unboxing and look at the laptop. Let me set up everything again and we'll power this on and see how powerful this fella is. I've moved locations and I forgot to show you the bottom of the laptop. It's uh, completely green. 
as you'd expect. We do have the leader information down the bottom there, which says it's the Companion 402 with a serial number, Windows 10, leader, don't throw it in the bin because that's illegal. And there's also four rubber feet on the bottom of this, which looking at this, it kind of looks like a MacBook with the black bar at the top there and the black rubber feet at the bottom, but it's uh, definitely far from a MacBook, I'll tell you that. And there's 10 screws to get into this laptop, which makes it fairly easy to pull apart. But once again, no upgradable options within this laptop. It's fairly basic and you'll see that during the teardown. Sorry for the really janky setup. It's about as good as I can do. Plus we're mainly just gonna be focusing on the display the whole time anyways. So let's go ahead and power this on and go straight into BIOS and show you that. And to get into BIOS, you have to press escape really quickly. Just spam it, usually works. There you go, we're in BIOS. Now there's actually quite a lot of options within the BIOS, but honestly, there's not a lot in here that's gonna boost the performance of this or anything like that. There's all of these options here. And the one thing that I did find is in system component, you can do spread spectrum clocking configuration, which to me sounds like you can overclock the RAM, but I don't think that's the case. But yeah, there's a whole bunch of options to configure certain components. NVMe configuration is here, but it says no device found. And that's because there's no actual physical NVMe M2 slot on the motherboard. Chipset is just all your Northbridge stuff, which says we've got two RAM sticks installed, which isn't quite correct. Once again, show you during the teardown. Southridge stuff, uncore configuration, which is all the graphic stuff, but I don't think there's too much here that's gonna improve performance for gaming on this. In miscellaneous configuration, it does say a fingerprint sensor. So likely this is a reused motherboard that's been featured in several different laptops with other configurations. Security, you don't need to go into. Boot devices also don't have to go into, but we'll save and exit and show you how long this takes to boot up. Three, two, one, here we go. Mind you, I have installed stuff on this, just all the basic stuff but still it's quite slow. I mean, it's EMMC and it does take a while to boot up. Not like a traditional SSD where it just sort of will boot up straight away. It does take a while and then it's got to kick in to login in. And there we go, we've booted up. For being a cheap laptop, it does boot faster than having just a standard hard drive in this, which is good, but it's also not gonna be as fast as having an SSD in this. I've actually had to sign into my own personal Microsoft account onto this because that's my account that has Minecraft on it. So don't mind me having to blur information here and there. But otherwise we've booted up with this glorious wallpaper. While we're looking at the nice wallpaper, let's talk about the display on this. The viewing angles on this are terrible. So if you just pop it down like that, you can't see anything. And if you're trying to look at the laptop from the side, you lose the image straight away. The screen definitely does have a washed out look to it. The blacks just aren't black at all. They're just, they're more blue than anything. But I've got to look at this as it's a cheap laptop. They've just put the cheapest components they can on this. So what I've got installed on this is basically just Chrome, the Minecraft launcher, Cinebench, ASSD benchmark and stuff, which we'll come back to very soon. In my computer, the 64 gig EMMC only has 20 gigabytes left, which isn't a whole heap of storage to work with. However, you can put a micro SD card in this if you want to, if you're really desperate for more storage. And going into properties, there is all of the specifications there. Now, I couldn't get an OEM image for this because of the whole Minecraft license and stuff like that. So I just installed Windows 10 stock on it and got the drivers from Leader's website. And in the drivers pack, it actually has an option to to put the OEM info in system, which I did, and now it looks completely factory. I'll just do a quick typing test on this because you can actually just hear how hollow the body of this is. So I'll just quickly do. That was just a quick typing test pecking at the keyboard, but you can sort of hear how cheap it is from that. Also the buttons there for WSAD painted green as well as the function keys as well, painted green, nice little touches. That's how great I can type on this too, by the way. Another thing I'll address now is the battery life on this. So currently I've got 17 hours and 54 minutes remaining on here with 97% remaining. That's definitely far from correct. I did play Minecraft on this for about three hours and I still had probably another hour of battery life left. General usability from this, like going onto YouTube and web browsing and all that sort of stuff, puts you at about the five hour range for battery life on this. Granted my unit's second hand, so the battery life isn't as it was out of the factory, but for my testing, a good five hours is about correct with this. Let's try some benchmarks on this. Starting with the SSD benchmark, which, no, it's not an SSD, it's EMMC. We'll just see how it performs, which it's called a generic B-Win or Bywin. We'll see how it goes. And that's the scores for the internal EMMC drive. Now, just as a comparison, the Geekon PC that I had a look at a couple of months back that had the two terabyte SSD in it got 6,782 with 3.7 gig read speed and 3.6 gig 
write speed. But I guess that's a bit of an unfair comparison considering that it has an actual SSD in it. I'm just giving you an idea though of the performance of it. It wouldn't have cost them too much to actually include a proper SSD in this, but for its intended audience, it's more than enough. Before I go into Cinebench, I'll just open up Core Temp. And as you can see, we've got 38 degrees on all cores at the moment. I've got MSI Afterburner to show you what frames you get in Minecraft and other games. So let me open up Cinebench. This may take quite a long time, but I'm curious to see what the scores actually match up with. Now I'm gonna have to plug a mouse in soon because I can't quite get used to the trackpad. Look, it's fine in most scenarios, but I just find it sort of jumps around a little bit too much. Luckily I have a really good gaming mouse we can put in it. This really cool RGB mouse here made by a company called Verve uh, that I'll hook up to this so we can do awesome gaming on this. All right, so let's do the multi-core score. I guess while I'm doing this as well, I'll have core temp open to the side. At 100% usage, at all four cores, it's averaging about 50 degrees Celsius, which is honestly not too bad for something that's passively cooled. All right, so multi has finished with 972 points, which is a lot more than what I was expecting. Let me try the single core benchmark, and then we'll see what else this CPU is close to. The temperatures have reached 71 degrees Celsius, but it's still within the threshold of the maximum temperature supported on the CPU, which is 105 degrees Celsius. Finally, after about an hour of testing Cinebench R23, we finally have a single core score of 402 points. Going to a couple of websites, there's actually nothing that shows scores this low. If we go by what it says, says on the scores on Cinebench. It's around the same as a 12 core Intel Xeon X5650 that got 486 for the single core, which that doesn't really add up. And multi, well, Multi's not even close, as it says, an i7 11th gen there. These are just numbers at the end of the day. It doesn't really give an accurate representation of the performance of this, apart from the fact that it took about an hour to complete. Here's what the camera looks like. There it is. There is not a whole lot going on here. So here's a couple of photos that I took with this. Looks fairly average. So if you're gonna be doing a video chat with someone on Discord or something like that about your Minecraft server, it'll be perfectly fine for that. Video wise looks a little something like this though. Does this look good? I'm sitting on the ground outside with the laptop but I'm just trying it out to see if it looks any good. It's VGA and it's about as good as you'd expect from a laptop at this price. Do I have jelly movement? Kind of. It's so weird to take a laptop outside and just you know, casually doing that, but it is what it is, isn't it? Does it look better inside? Kind of. Sort of. Look, if I line my ear up correctly, you can see right through it. Wow, look at that. Isn't that cool? It's reasonable, I guess. I can't really say much more. It's just a little tiny camera and doesn't do too much which it's not meant to be a camera to take beautiful photos. It's just meant for video chats and goofy selfies or whatever, and it does the job. I'm about to do a browser test as well as a YouTube test with this, but I just thought of something real quickly. Let me try to play an 8K video on this. The keyword there is try. All right, so I'll open up VLC. Yeah, we'll see how we go. I'm using my uh, charge. This is, what? Oh, this is 4K. Never mind. this is 4K, not 8K. Sorry, 4K. Well, that actually worked perfectly fine. Um, the fan noise you can hear is from my Charge SSD. I've got it plugged into a hub at the moment. That actually is reasonable. A bit choppy at some parts, but for the most part, that's not bad. But oh god, the display is terrible on this. Well, that was a bit surprising then. So let's go into YouTube then. There we go. What's on the training page today? Let's get in there. political stuff and Simon Cowell looking a bit funny. Okay, I'll try Costa Rica first. Now I've played Costa Rica 4K on some good screens and some really bad screens. So let's just try 4K with a seller on. I don't expect this to work, but we'll see what happens. I mean, the display on this is 720p, but I'm just curious to see if this can actually play it back. Yeah. No. Ooh. We've only got 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi as well, but there you go. It works. It's a bit choppy and it needs to buffer every now and again, but it's playing it. You can probably tell just by the display quality on this that it's just really washed out. The colors just don't pop at all. It's a very, very dull display. For it to play back 4K on YouTube, that's actually fairly impressive with this. Let's bump it down to 1080p, just so we can give this a fair shot. What the hell happened? Why did it go to Norway? How did that happen? How did I go to Norway? I don't understand what I just did.
Okay. Bit chuggy now. Now it's slightly broken. At least it's playing it at full speed now. There we go. 1080p, perfect. Well, not perfect perfect. There is some little sort of frame dips here and there. Giving this laptop to a kid, just go here, go play Minecraft, watch YouTube on, there'll be no problems. And this will probably default to 480p most of the time, or 720p anyways. Going onto Google and actually navigating around, you will find slowdowns. So if I go to Leader 402 Companion Laptop and just go onto the first website that comes up for it, which is just here, and look, for web browsing, it should be fine for the most part. Don't expect it to be super fast and snappy with everything. This one comes with a blue case. Oh, that's a 402B. You can see there, browsing will be okay. For someone who just wants to go on forums to look up Minecraft stuff or whatever, it'll be fine. The market that this laptop is aimed at, it's for kids. It's not like some random person's gonna walk into Officeworks and say, hey, I want that laptop right there because that looks cool. I don't think they'll do that. They'll most likely go with something else or end up like me and buy one from Cashies for 89 bucks and call it a day. If you're buying it and expecting it to be a powerhouse, you're not going to find that. It works for the most basic tasks, and that's really about it. We'll go back onto YouTube, though, because I want to do the speaker test. And then after this, we can actually then play Minecraft on this and do some other gaming, and then further talk about a conclusion for this. I don't need this to be on high quality or anything, but I'll bump the volume all the way up, which that's as loud as it gets. And it's not stereo speakers either. It's just two speakers in there just playing music. There's no point in even getting the sound meter out because this is as loud as it gets. Yeah. Not very punchy, a bit sort of crackly. I have seen the speakers in this. They're nothing impressive. They're not big spurkers either. They're just sort of average tin cans that have been thrown in there. As I said, average is probably the best word I can describe these speakers as. For music playback or whatever, it'll be more than enough. So I think that gives you a good idea of browser performance as well as the speaker test and YouTube on this. I'm just amazed that 4K video did play back as well as it did. That was at 150 megabits as well, I believe. Also, I'm not going to be showing it, but basic office tasks like Word and stuff like that, no problems on this. They'll be probably a bit sluggish from time to time, but for the most part, you'll be right to go on this. Battery life as well, I've got five hours remaining and I've been using this for a solid hour and a half, but that battery life will fluctuate, obviously. I've talked about most aspects of this, but I think it's best that I show you how gaming goes on this. Now, gaming is going to be in three sections. I'm going to be playing Minecraft first, then I'll play Fear, which is a game from 2005, and I'll try and play Cyberpunk on this. I don't know how I'll go, but let's just see how it runs. So here we go, Minecraft. And I've got the Bedrock Edition and Java Edition. I'll play both of them just to show you how both of them run, but I've got to update this first. Now, I've already tested Minecraft on this, so I know how it runs, but I can say that like loading the game and stuff does take quite a while. All right, so we'll start off with Minecraft for Windows, and then we'll play Java Edition. So here we go. Now, I've tried this on my own PC, which has an SSD in it. Pretty much just loads straight away, but we've got to give this the benefit of the doubt for being a cheapo laptop, eMMC. It's not going to just load it straight away, but a kid might get impatient if they're trying to play Minecraft and join up with their friends on some server or something like that. They might be like, hurry up, I need to play Minecraft. Come on. All right, it's loaded. So I'll go into settings. And if I go down to video, I've just left everything on absolutely default. Let me show you the world that I've been playing around in. So I needed a way to play Minecraft on this without playing Minecraft. This is what I did. Just basically been in a minecart the whole entire time. I've had a mouse connected where I've just been knocking the mouse ever so often just to wake it up and not go to sleep. And that's how I've also been playing Minecraft as well because I've got other things to do. And there you go, that's uh, what I did. I built a track and uh, just let myself just go around and around in circles. And the chicken just jumped in there and off I went. So yeah, this was pretty fun. What I need to do though is open up Afterburner just so I could show you all the frames that we're getting from Minecraft. I know it's silly, but I'll do it anyways. Let me load up a new world and show you how Minecraft will actually run on this. And if I just sort of fly around and go into sort of more detail, it runs. Minecraft works. It runs at 30 FPS roughly. Sometimes it goes higher like here without too much going on. For the majority 
of the time, you'll find that it goes to about 30 FPS and that's it. Which, look, for a kid just playing this, I'm sure I'm not really going to complain with this, you know, running as it is. It's Minecraft, they'll be able to play it and build things and go into multiplayer and do all the sort of stuff that people that play Minecraft do, because I don't play Minecraft anymore. With not many textures going on, it runs at pretty much 60 FPS, but when you get to textures on the blocks and stuff, that's when it sort of starts to chug down a bit. What this is built for, to play Minecraft, that it certainly can. So if you just come here to check to see if this does play Minecraft, yes it does, it can. However, I just want to do a quick test. This is a test that I used to do on older computers, and that is lay a whole bunch of TNT down, explode it, and watch the FPS drop. It's loading things in, a bit slowly, but it's all right. Uh, let's just go to here. Yeah, I used to spend ages building TNT tracks. Uh, when I first played this, I would just load up TNT everywhere, make a whole line of TNT everywhere, and I'd just fly up, set it off, and watch the mayhem. So we're gonna do exactly that. I think this might be a bit overkill, do you think? Yeah, slightly? Now that it's looking like a level out of Crash Bandicoot, let me go ahead and do something stupid. Oh boy. Ready? Set? Watch you go. Oh, frame dip there. There you go. <laughs> you get a good idea of how it runs. But let me show you Java Edition though. I'm sure that most people aren't going to play Java Edition, even though you can do a lot of mods with it and stuff. That's not the Minecraft of choice, I believe. It's the one that I'm playing is the one that's meant for this laptop. But I'm just going to quickly show you how Java Edition does run, just in case you're curious. Wait for it. There we go. And, uh... Do I... Do I need to say any more? 4 FPS? 2 FPS? I think you get the idea that Java Edition's probably not going to be the best on this. Stick with the Bedrock Edition and you'll be perfectly fine. Uh, yeah, this is this is horrible. I was told that there's plenty of mods for this and stuff to optimize your playing experience if you wanted to do that. I'm not going to do any of that because I'm not too familiar with that sort of stuff. I'm just showing you that Java Edition runs a little something like that. So now that I've talked about Minecraft on this for quite a while, let me now try Fear on this. I'm curious to see how it runs. Also, this version is a ripped version. Don't worry, I do own the actual game in box and stuff with all the expansion packs. It's just that this version I have on my USB and it's like 1.8 gigs or something like that. Perfect for testing. So just I'm going to have at 1366 by 768. The performance, let's see what it says for this. Considering this is a game from 2005, it says medium and custom. I'm going to put it to maximum first. I'm very curious to see how powerful these graphics really are. For an old game like this, I mean, I've got it on maximum, granted. I'll probably have to lower the settings, but let's just see. Jankowski, you in position? position? Say the word. All right. All right. Move it up. Beep. I've played this so many times. Um, but I, I could say that it's just a little laggy. A little bit. Can I do the speedrun strat? Nope. Speedrun strats. Yay. All right, let me just lower the settings. I'll do medium on both. There we go. Perfect. Well, it's 25 FPS, but it's now playable at 1366 by 768. Let's see if I get the door glitch. Nope. Watch the text overlap. Yep, there you go. Look, it's playable. It's definitely playable. Hold on a second. I could have tried something more mainstream like GTA 5 as well, just to see how that would run, but GTA 5 does run on pretty low end systems and at quite reasonable speeds as well. So I'd assume that it would probably run at maybe 1024 by 768, 30 FPS probably, all on low. That'd probably be a, just a, just an estimate from me. But it's good to see that Fear actually does run decent for a game that's almost 20 years old. Let that sink in. Uh, but yeah, there you go. I think I may have shot three birds by doing that. That's okay. 71 degrees still is the highest that we've got to. The laptop itself is warm, but it's not hot. So for this being passively cooled, it's actually doing a fairly good job for cooling. I mean, considering this is a fairly low end chip in this anyways, it's not going to get extremely hot like an i7 or something like that. So the last thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to try Cyberpunk. Right, let's see if it boots. I don't think it will. 
come on buddy you can do it I believe in you oh my god oh my god we have cyberpunk <laughs> oh boy oh oh dang I'll try it again wait 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 hold up no, it crashed. No, nope, wait. Hasn't crashed yet. Wait. If I keep pressing space a bunch of times, it might work. Nope. 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 I tried. I could have tried Doom on this, but I'm pretty sure that Doom would be fine. The original version, not the 2016 one. That would be a bit painful, but I'd say older titles would be fine on this. But we've got to look at this as it's made for Minecraft. That's what it says on the box and that's what it plays. What it advertises is exactly what this does. As a laptop that has a $500 retail price or $400, depending on where you look, that's definitely not worth it for this because you can buy basically any other laptop in that price range that will run the game fine. For people who just want to grab a laptop nice and cheap off the shelf and play Minecraft, this will do it fine. But for people who are more tech savvy, you can pick up a secondhand laptop for probably 150 bucks that would do exactly the same as this and probably run it even better. And you'd likely get an SSD, more RAM and stuff like that. For me, paying $89 for this, I think it's a pretty good deal. Granted, I can't do any upgrades to this whatsoever and I'm just stuck with it as is. So what you've seen with me showcasing what this can do is pretty much as much as it can do. I can't push it any further than I already have. But if the laptop did allow for some upgradability, there will be more potential with this, but since there's no options for upgradability, you are pretty limited with what you can do. But at the end of the day, it's a generic laptop that has a green casing on it and comes with some stickers and Minecraft. I've said Minecraft a lot within this video, but I think you get the idea of what I'm saying though. The price isn't quite worth it for this. Even the newer versions that are out there now with an updated seller on stuff, they likely have a bit more performance push in them. If your kids are bugging you and you see this on Marketplace for a hundred bucks, then uh, yeah, perfectly fine, but don't spend 400 bucks on this. Just if you're gonna do that, think about a secondhand laptop or uh, something in the same price range that probably does offer a bit better performance than what this can do. But I think that's pretty much it with this thing. I think I've talked about everything that this laptop can do. So I think I should tear it down for you all, show you the innards of this and call this one a review, I think. There's honestly not a whole lot in here, just to give you a fair warning. And I've already taken this apart several times. The first time I took this apart was on a stream. I thought I'd just show everybody the innards of this thing and sort of confirmed what was inside of this. There was a few pieces in here that kind of just fell out and I'll show you them very soon. There's two more screws underneath the top two feet as well. So don't try and pull the whole thing apart without first checking these. And now the whole thing just pops open like so. And look at that. <laughs> there is a bit of silver shielding on the back of the plastic cover, which is all painted green. But that there, holy moly, is just one big battery. But it's so generic though. It sure is 5,000 milliamp hours, two 2,500 milliamp hour cells in there. That's what takes up majority of this. But there's also this right here, which adds a bit of weight to this because it needs to have a bit of weight. But this also doubles as stabilization as well. So it's not too bad. Uh, when I pulled this apart for the first time, this sort of just came out just fell out as well as these two little magnets up here as well. They fell out. So I just super glued them back into place. Fixed. You've got the two speakers just there. As I said, it's not stereo speakers. They're just two loudspeakers. Now we do have two microphones on this, which I did show you the microphone quality during the camera test. And I, as you heard, it's, it's not the best, but it'll do. But yeah, you've got two microphones on there. Let's take a look at the motherboard. If you see right there, there is what should be a connector for an M.2 drive because it would fit nice and snug there and a little standoff would be there. And there's also another option just there for another card to be installed, but this would be for probably another Wi-Fi card. You can see some unused connectors just there, another unused connector just there, and also viewers may notice this right here as well. That is likely for USB Type-C, but that's not implemented, unfortunately. And even checking here as well, there's another connector there, two more connectors there that could have been implemented, but just not. So pretty much reused guts in here, but they've stripped out the options that would have made this upgradable. But I will take off the heatsink just so you can see the Celeron as well as the storage and the RAM as well. All that's cooling this is this piece of copper right here. That's it. That's all that's cooling the Celeron because it doesn't need a fan to cool it. It will just run perfectly with this and that doesn't have a heat pipe or anything in it. Also, I've just noticed that there's a um, protective film on the underside of this 
leaving just a square cutout for going over the actual dial, which we've got a thermal pad there as well. Not thermal paste, just a thermal pad, but it works. Don't question it, it works. There we have a Nuviton chip just there, probably for chipset most likely. Then we have a module just there, which likely would be our flash storage. No, that's our 64 gig EMMC right there, because that's the B-Win chip. So that is the four gigabytes of DDR4 RAM just there in one module. I was going to show you the underside of the motherboard, but there's honestly nothing that's too exciting to show. It's very much like that Oli laptop that I reviewed a while back. Sort of similar scenario with that to this, because I think that was passively cooled as well. I think that was better than this though, build quality wise anyways, it was definitely better. The Wi-Fi card just there, which I'm pretty sure is just a Wi-Fi USB adapter that they've just chucked in there. Hey, it works. So I'll just put the piece of tape back over there and not question it. But yep, that's pretty much all that's inside of this thing. Speedy reassembly. And there you go, it's back together. I'll just quickly make sure it still works though. And that all the snaps are snapped down, which I believe so. Yep, it still works. Not that you can see it, but yeah, it definitely still works. But I think that's pretty much everything that I needed to talk about with the Leader Companion 402 Minecraft laptop. I've talked about this for far too long and I think you all probably already knew the conclusion about this laptop. I know there's a few other videos people have made going over this laptop. I know Random Gaming in HD did a video on it a while back and I think I watched that one, but that was a while ago. So I sort of wanted to do my own take on it and you know, this was just a random thing Akashi's have seen and I thought oh, I may as well grab it, why not? I think it's been a bit of an interesting video to do, taking a look at a laptop, because a lot of people ask me, you should do more laptop reviews. And I do them, but I don't like them because they're just all over the place and they have no structure. Plus, I've been sick for the last couple of days, so returning back to doing videos and stuff, I'm kind of just all over the place. So I hope this video has been somewhat reasonable. <laughs> it's, it probably isn't, but um, yeah, don't, don't mind me for not uploading for a while and coming back and giving you this. Okay, Smalls, shh, stop rambling because you, the viewer there, you've made it to the end of the video. So thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. But if you had to use timestamps to skip along, um, I don't blame you there. <laughs> That's completely understandable. If you had to skip along past all of the segments and stuff, it's just a very broken review, but I hope you've all enjoyed it nonetheless. And feel free to let me know what you thought of this down in the comments below. If you think it's a worthy laptop for the price, or if you think it's overpriced. Whatever you think, feel free to share your thoughts with me. But yeah, I think I've got one more video to do before I take a definite break in February. I was meant to do stuff in January, but yeah, unfortunately I got sick and I've just sort of been taking it really easy and just really wanted to do this and get it out of the way. And it was pretty breezy doing this. I've delivered a review and at least I can let you all know that I'm okay, I'm all right, it's all good. Just minor setback and, uh, yeah, I'll try and get one more video out before the 7th of February and uh, go from there. Maybe a live stream or something. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Thanks a ton for watching, everyone. I really do appreciate it. And I hope to see you all again very soon whenever I do the next video, which I have to do the telephone review because you folks did donate to see that. So I do have to work on that next. But until I see you all, please take care. Stay safe. Be good people. Thanks again for watching and being patient with me. And I'll catch you all next time in another cheapo review of a crappy device. Bye. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks guys for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.